everything here in the hospital is uh, not uh, enough, not enough for this uh, amount of uh, who are wounded and uh, for the delivery, for the labor women, for cesarean sections, everything is, uh, is not uh, enough. And uh, the, the amount of people who comes to us uh, with uh, and uh, with the uh, wounds, with the uh, injuries, with the uh, with the uh, airstrikes, uh, the the medicine the, the, uh, that here is not enough for everyone. And the babies uh, which uh, are uh, with diarrhea, with because of uh, and not uh, with polluted water because there is no water here, no clean water, and. Uh, it's very bad, it's a very bad situation. Uh, it's very bad. Uh, the hospital is not safe. I'm now at the third floor. Because there, the hospital is not enough to everyone to stay at the first floor or under the ground. Our section, the, the delivery section, the walls uh, have opened and the roof has uh, many times has uh, broken so we we fixed it and uh, we uh, started to work again or we can't stop because uh, there is no hospitals in Aleppo we can't stop of working I left uh, one week before the complete siege, which is about five weeks ago. I barely made it. Um, when I went there um, at the end of June, uh, the road to Aleppo was uh, semi-blocked, so we had this uh, part of the road, the Castello Road. That's the road coming from Turkey to Aleppo. Um, that is exposed to shelling, snipers, and airstrikes. And the drivers, actually, we went through that road, told us, um, you have to say your final prayer because you may die any minute in the next three miles or so. But we made it in and uh, we made it out luckily without harm. Um, but at that time people were, you know, talking inside Aleppo about the coming siege. Um, I visited seven hospitals um, and each one of them have been bombed several times. I stayed in a hospital called M10 that is underground because it was bombed. So imagine yourself a physician who work and uh, eat and sleep in the same place um, underground. There's bombing every day, not only targeting hospitals, but also targeting neighborhoods. So every day I communicate with my colleagues, they send me pictures of children who are maimed, who are mutilated. Uh, and they send me a picture of a child that they were ventilating him manually because there's no more ventilators um, in Aleppo uh, to save lives. Uh, usually in this situation, you evacuate the patients to Turkey or to uh, other place that is safer, but they cannot evacuate these patients. It's uh, near impossible. Um, we're talking about 35 physicians who are remained serving 300,000 people. They don't have the basic necessities that we have to save lives. They, you know, I was speaking with one of the nurses, Bara. There is no antibiotics. There is no painkillers. I mean, how can you manage your patients uh, who are coming to you every day um, without these necessities? You have to decide as a physician which patient you can save and which patients you can let go. And this is the worst situation that you put yourself in as a physician. And, and, and these physicians have nothing else. Uh, I mean, their, their hands are tied. <laughs> 